in that moment when I was in 2005 face, face to face with Asif Shaukat, the brother-in-law of the president, basically, and it was very obvious that we are not, you know, the, you know, that the threat of basically getting killed was, was pretty open and pretty clear. And I defied him, okay, and showed no fear. But then I realized, okay, now it got into this point. Now I'm being said, if I continue down that road, I'm going to end up dead. I have a wife and I have two children. Now, the wife and two children are not, uh, were new to me. Uh, I got married in 2002. Uh, my two kids are not actually mine. They are not my biological children. They, they are my wife's from a previous marriage. Uh, their father died in 1992 of cancer, and I, when I became part of the family, I became their father. And they, within months, I mean, it was, it was an, as a, I don't know, a marriage made in heaven, you can say, because frankly, we loved each other so much, uh, and and they started to call me, you know, father within within weeks. You know, that was how close we really felt, and I, I, I felt that if I, I'll, you know, stop did not stop for a second and say, okay, is there a way out of this, and, and, and decided to go that course full steam ahead, they will be the orphaned again, in a sense. Khawla will be widowed again. Do I have, can I be, can I afford to be that heartless? <laughs> you know, at one point in my life, I decided, okay, as I said, I'm going to be selfish, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and behave completely free and not care about the consequences. But once I got married and once I was in this position, and, and, and at that particular moment, I realized I have a responsibility I've never had before. Perhaps if they were my kids, perhaps if there was no such experience before, I would not have cared. And I would have said, okay, they'll be happy their father is a martyr or whatever, you know. Uh, my mom and, 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 their, uh, and my in-laws will care about them, no problem. But here there was this question of I chose to be part of a family, knowing the history, knowing the suffering they've had, and now I'm going to impose on them a further layer of suffering, the same kind. In a sense, that was cruel. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. So when, when I was talking to, to Asif Shaukat, and I told him, look, I cannot work for you, and I'm not really afraid of dying. But if you wanted to kill me, you would have done it already. Obviously, you're trying to give me a choice. But instead of making that choice between working for you or dying, why not leaving? I'm not saying uh, when I'm outside I'm not going to be an equally active troublemaker because that would be a lie and I'm not going to lie to you. But at least I won't be here. I won't be right there in your face every day. Will that be something that's acceptable? And he smiled and he said, yeah, that's a perfect solution. And we drank our, the rest of our tea and as I said at the end of the meeting, gave me that hug and, 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 and a send off. So... Um, but yeah, that was the first probably moment in my life when I uh, actually, um, uh, you know, I did a retraction. I consider still my departure of Syria to be a form of running away, whether I like it or not. There is no way to sugarcoat it, but I guess it was also a good decision nonetheless.